Toxic tire dust. It comes from tires. Your car has four of these, so does mine. Trucks have like 18 of them. Tires are essential to every moving vehicle. They're in direct contact with roads 100% of the time. Tire grooves meet asphalt, rubbing in streets to pull cars forward mile after mile after mile. And roads are tough on tires. Imagine walking down miles of city streets barefoot every day. We wouldn't be able to do it. The skin on our feet would be rubbed raw. But tires have to hold up to this pretty intense grinding, grating, speeding up, slowing down, turning, braking, skidding. That's why tires are made from a super specific blend of materials designed to resist wear and tear. Materials include textiles, fillers, and cables to hold the shape of the wheel, but the key material, of course, is rubber. About a third of each tire is natural rubber. It comes from a tree, but this rubber is constantly pressed up against asphalt to keep cars in motion, and that's got to generate a lot of friction. Of course, that generates a lot of heat, which of course produces over time a lot of wear and tear. Now, with all this wear and tear, some of the rubber that's supposed to be part of the tire is now part of the road. So, why don't tires need to be replaced more often? Tires tend to last about five years. Since most Americans drive about 15,000 miles annually, that's approximately 75,000 miles driven by each of our tires. I mean, what would that look like, though? The Pan American Highway, a network of roads connecting Alaska to Argentina, is 18,640 miles long. Now, modern tires could theoretically last four whole journeys between Alaska and Argentina. That's a lot of miles. Natural rubber couldn't hold up with that many miles, so how is this possible? It's all about chemistry and physics. Oxygen and ozone do the most damage to rubber. When exposed to oxygen, rubber becomes stiffer and more susceptible to cracks. Meanwhile, ozone causes rubber's polymer chains to break down, also resulting in more cracks. That's where 6PPD comes in. 6PPD, what is that? Well, I, I looked it up, I didn't know. And it stands for, oh, okay. We'll just call it 6PPD. To keep rubber intact, manufacturers created 6PPD, an antioxidant and antiozonant that prevents the tires from cracking and heat aging. 6PPD reacts with ozone and oxygen to create a film on the outside of a tire, like an invisible shield. The reaction between 6PPD and ozone forms a transformation product called 6PPD quinone, which ends up in tire particles. And tires go through this intense lifetime of slowly destroying themselves on roads. Turning creates friction, braking creates friction, and with all of this friction, tire particles are going to chip off and turn into dust on the streets. 6PPD quinone is in those tiny tire particles dusting every inch of our roadways. Well, you may think, that's just on the road, who cares if grimy asphalt gets more dirty? Well, it's not just asphalt. The entire surface area of our landscapes are connected to watersheds. It's like a natural drainage system. And what did we place on top of that interconnected system? Well, industry, bridges, roads, parking lots, subdivisions, driveways, sidewalks. So when rain hits asphalt, and as much as we'd like to keep the system separate, it's going to make its way into the watershed. All of our stormwater infrastructure systems, curbs, gutters, Storm drains, pipes, and outfalls are built on top of a landscape that drains polluted stormwater runoff and a toxic punch bowl of toxic chemicals into our rivers, both quickly and slowly. All roads lead to Puget Sound. It looks pretty, but it's really polluted. So what's happening in the streams? This. What happened? How could healthy salmon end up like this? Tires. 6 PPD quinone. 6-PPD quinone is super soluble. It leaches into the water when tire material coated with it comes into contact with stormwater. Then that stormwater eventually ends up in the watershed, into salmon spawning streams. More than half of coho salmon on their return to Puget Sound streams die, just like this one, before they are able to spawn. They enter the native stream, robust, healthy fish, and die a terrible death within a few hours. This happens because salmon have evolved over millions of years to be very sensitive to the timing of their spawning runs. They wait in the estuary until the first major rainstorm, which gives them the signal that there's probably enough water in the stream now, after the long summer dry period, to move up to their spawning habitat. Now, meanwhile, all of the pollution we generate, like oil spills, copper flakes, tire dust, 
microplastics, excess fertilizer, dog poop, and soapy grime from car washing has just been sitting there on your driveway or lawn or on all of our roadways all summer long, building up. Then, much of this washes off our impervious urban surfaces with the first major rainstorm of the fall season. So salmon come upstream to spawn at the very moment when the most toxic mix of polluted stormwater runoff is plowing into the stream. It hits them like a fist. 6-PPD quinone lethal to salmon ends up in that mix and prevents salmon from getting the oxygen they need to stay alive. Now, here's the problem. 6-PPD is like a food preservative, but for tires. It keeps them fresh and helps them last as long as possible. If we just ditch the preservative, our product becomes less safe. Faulty tires are a huge safety hazard, and tire manufacturers produce over 2 billion tires worldwide each year. So we'll need to find greener solutions to safely make the tires we depend on. But in the case of 6PPD, we can't just do nothing. Our salmon are dying. Look up the 12 principles of green chemistry. See if you can figure out how to invent a new material that meets the performance, durability, and safety standards that the tires on our cars and trucks have to achieve, and also meets these 12 principles.